Welcome to the next installment of my lap of the map. This episode sees me hitting the Spirit of Tasmania, doing the overnight crossing and making my way down to Tassie. I had about two and a half weeks there and no real plan other than just to see as much as I could and take whatever advice I could get along the way. I was really impressed with the amount of free campsites I had around Tassie and also some of the facilities I had there as well. The riding in Tassie was just phenomenal and not just the bitumen roads either. I found a number of logging tracks and state forests that were really good country to go riding through. On some occasions by myself it uh, did make me a little nervous but true caution to the wind took it easy and uh, managed to make my way through. This day I come out the other side and ended up at a pub in the middle of the paddock. I'm at the pub in a paddock and one of the things about this joint, other than its location, is they've got some beer swilling pigs. Oh, this one. Oh. It's meant to be a pig, not a sheep. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Now this apparently is approved by the RSPCA. Trust me. Come on. Yeah. You want some? Hey. <laughs> Don't go wasting it. <laughs> Look at that. Stubby gone. Didn't This is Red Bridge in Campbelltown. It was completed in 1838 and is apparently one of the oldest brick bridges left in Australia. The beaches around Tassie were really stunning. Beautiful white sand crystal clear water. It was a tad bit chilly for me though, so I'd, while I didn't go for a swim, it did make for some nice spots to pull up and have a feed. A trip to Tassie was never gonna be complete without visiting Port Arthur. I found the convict history really fascinating and walking around the buildings was really interesting. If you haven't been to the Mona Museum just out of Hobart, it's well worth a look. Mind you, it's like no other museum I've ever been to. Shot is a bit like a little ball bearing that they used to put in the, in the rifles. 
Uh, this joint here made them for hunting purposes, not for uh, killing people. But in any case, they um, melt it down up the top here, and then they put it in a basket suspended from the from the roof here, and it'd go through small holes, depending on what size they were chasing at the time, and falls all the way to the bottom and lands in a pool of water and then once it's uh, cooled and all that kind of thing then they uh, get it out clean it up and those are the fit for purpose and they get sold off. Well I made it to the most southern part in Australia that you can get by vehicle. At the end there's a bit of a walkway but uh, that's it, as far south as I can go. Bit of a gentleman's walk to Russell Falls, so nice easy one to start the day. It's less than a K from from the cafe, so yeah, grab myself a coffee, go for a stroll, and uh, yeah, really nice, well worth the walk. Mount Gordon Dam, this fella's working his way down, give you some idea, pretty impressive. Center pivot sprayers, not really new, although I like this idea, it's a bit different. So what do you do when your house is in the middle of the paddock? Well, you just water the house as well. That joint's got no roof, so that'd be nice inside. Lake St. Clair. It's the deepest freshwater lake in Australia. Depth of about 167 metres. Yeah, you wouldn't want to drop anything. Have a look at this, Guide Falls, southwest of Burnie, magic place. And that's it, Tassie trip draws to a close. 
Gee, it was a fantastic place. The scenery was amazing. The people were great. The history is phenomenal. So if you haven't been there before, put it on your list, even if you don't have a motorbike.